Hello? Hello, you might hear my tummy growling. Um, we are starting with nice, long, natural nails. Anytime my nails grow out, I like to take advantage of the length and film a natural nail look for my internet friends. As always, I am starting out by doing some cuticle cleanup with my Blue Cross cuticle remover, which I like to keep in a little dropper bottle. I'm applying it to the skin around my nails. I allow it to marinate for a couple minutes, and then I take a long wooden manicure stick, and I push back my cuticles, scrape off dead skin hanging around there, and then I wipe the mush with a little bit of alcohol on a lint-free wipe and then I use a nail brush to brush off any excess. Any dead hangy stuff left behind will be gently trimmed with my cuticle nippers. I really like to take my time with my cuticle cleanup so I get every last flake and then I'm using a bit more alcohol to wipe my nails clean before moving on to prep. I'm first going in with my dehydrator. I'll be skipping my acid-free primer this time, and instead I'll be using a peel-off base coat because I don't know how long I wanna wear this look, and the peel-off base coat makes it easier to remove product, especially from my natural nails when they're long. Anytime I say peel-off base coat, it's making me think of peel-off, like the delicious rice dish that is my childhood favorite. God, I'm hungry. I make a really good chicken and veggie peel-off, by the way. I would punish an entire pot of it right now. I like to have mine with pickles on the side. It's just how I grew up eating it. I don't know how I'm gonna get through this voiceover now. All I can think about is peel off. I think I'm gonna go take some chicken thighs out of the freezer to make a freaking peel off tonight, BRB. <laughs> Once my peel off base coat has dried down, I'm applying my foundation, aka base gel. And for anybody that's new here, I like to use these nail rods when my natural nails are long because curing my nails with a nail rod positioned under my nail prevents the sides of my nails from curling inward during the curing process. I am actually surprised at how many of you have the same issue and I'm glad to have given you a solution to it. This little secret of mine is especially effective when my nails are more square shaped Shaped, which you'll actually see in my next video. So like I said, I'm applying a thin layer of foundation. I'm placing the rod under my nail and I'm flash curing the foundation to sort of set the sides of my nail to prevent any curling. I do this to all of my nails and then I give them a full 45 second cure in my regular LED lamp.
I am removing the inhibition layer. Sometimes I get asked why I do this. There's no reason for this other than that it's annoying to have the inhibition layer on. Little fuzzy bits get stuck in between steps when I'm trying to show you other things and it makes my life a lot easier to just wipe my nails clean. If I wasn't filming, I would just leave it and immediately move on to the next step because the inhibition layer does serve a purpose, but when I film, it's a pain in my ass. I don't like little fuzzies sticking to my nails, so I wipe it off if I have other things that I want to show you. I added a little bit of length to my thumbnail and evened out the ridges with my clear builder gel, so I'll be doing the same to the rest of my nails. I'm using Nail Forms and this clear builder gel in the bottle that I've been wanting to try on camera by the Beatles brand. I probably won't be in frame for this whole process because I tend to pull my hand right up to my face when I'm doing this, but let's hope for the best. First, I'm applying a thin slip layer to the whole nail and then I take a little bit more product and starting at my cuticle I begin floating it down my nail. Then I grab a nail art brush and I extend my tip a little bit, add some extra product to the apex and flash cure. If you're interested in seeing like a more in-depth video on how I apply builder gel, builder in a bottle, what have you, I will link a video for you in the description box below, but I'm kind of like skipping through this here because it's not the main focus of my video. Of course, I wasn't in frame for much of this application, but you get the gist. I repeat these steps on all of my nails and then I give them a full 45 second cure in my LED lamp. wipe off the sticky inhibition layer and move on to filing and shaping with a 180 grit hand file and a buffing block. I pretty much keep the same shape that I had before I applied the builder gel. They're just a little bit longer and have more structure.
I always like to melt the builder gel into my nail at the cuticle so I'm just using a little bit of acid-free primer to do that it gives the nails a more natural look especially as they continue to grow you can also use acetone to do this but I prefer acid-free primer because it's not as harsh for my base shade today I'll be using put it in neutral by OPI I find the OPI gel polish formula to be really fluid so I sometimes flash cure each nail after I apply it so that it doesn't run to the sides of my nails as I'm painting the next nail before I get to curing and I did two coats of this and cured each coat in my LED lamp for 45 seconds So magnetic polish has been around for a while, but it's all the rage right now. It's basically a polish or gel polish formula that contains magnetic shimmers in it, which can be activated to create different patterns and shapes using a magnet. I'm pretty picky when it comes to magnetic gel polish in particular, which is why I haven't done a video on them until now. I'm not into the rainbow looks. I'm not into the super glittery looks with this type of polish. I like my magnetic gel polish to have a certain glass-like finish. Once I activate my magnetic gel polish, I like it to look like wet glass. So when I'm hunting for magnetic polishes, I usually gravitate towards the ones that have the words smooth or glass in the name. And I'll probably do a separate video on all the ones that I like, but today I'm just going to highlight this particular kit. Also keep in mind, I'm still a total noob when it comes to magnetic gel polishes, so I'm kind of learning as I go and winging it in this video. So this kit comes with eight different shades, a little instructional pamphlet, and a double-sided magnet. Sidebar, the bottles are very small. I wasn't a fan of that, but I digress. Here are all the shades swatched and activated, finished off with a little bit of top coat. Do you see how smooth and glassy they look. They do have a little shimmer to them under my kitchen lights, but still a quite fine, smooth mirror finish. I'm not really into the rainbow looks, not a fan of the multi-dimensional shapes or super glittery magnetic polishes. I prefer a less is more approach. My taste is more aligned with simple, dainty, luxurious looks. Now, that's not to say I won't do fun, creative looks, but if you've been watching my videos for a while, I definitely have a particular vibe that I go for with all of my looks. So I'm applying the shade 002, which is the lightest beige in the set. I think it'll pair really well with put it in neutral as my base. I applied the first coat and I just left it as is and cured it. And then I applied a second coat and activated the magnetic shimmers using the magnet provided in this kit. So this magnet is pretty strong, which is important. That's one thing I've learned while troubleshooting with these types of polishes is you need a really strong magnet to activate the shimmers. I've tried other kits and the magnets were shit, so it's nice that this one is so strong. So I took my ring off so it doesn't interfere. Now I'm just kind of playing around because I truly to this day have no idea what the hell I'm doing with these magnets or how to get the same pattern or design twice. Like I kind of know what I'm doing, but I kind of don't. What I do know is this. Never point the magnet directly on top of the nail. Keep it parallel to the nail. I also found these other little tiny magnets that I put together to make one large magnet to use around the cuticle area and that's been working out for me. I also turned off the filming lights for a moment so you could better see the effect. Sometimes I feel like my filming lights blow everything out too much. And you know what's funny? You know where the lighting is perfect for this specific look? My kitchen. Maybe I should move this entire operation in the middle of my kitchen next time. So instead of immediately curing the first coat on my index finger, I decided to activate it with my magnet before 
before curing and see if that makes a difference when doing the second coat. Again, I don't know what I did here, but it turned out exactly how I wanted, so I'm now moving on to my next nail. I'm gonna try a different technique on my ring and pinky fingers. I genuinely, again, cannot explain what I did, but I'll let you watch and see for yourself. Whatever I did, I like it, Picasso. I'm applying a second coat to my index finger and kind of trying to replicate what I did on my ring and pinky fingers. Let's see if it works out. I guess my camera cut out while doing my second coat on my ring finger, but after I finished up my pinky, I did another 45 second cure in my LED lamp, just for good measure. Somehow, I managed to match my pinky and ring finger in one style, and my middle and pointer finger in another style, which I'm not mad about. I like both, but I think I like my ring and pinky finger slightly more, so if I ever want to replicate this look, I will be watching my own video back so I can follow the exact magnet pattern that I used when doing those two fingernails. Next, I'm applying a generous layer of the Koopa top coat. I think this really gives the nails that glossy look that I love.
Honestly, considering the fact that I had no idea what I was really doing and just kind of messing around with a magnet, these turned out really nice. What do you think? Lastly, I'm finishing off with a little bit of cuticle oil and I guess someone could sniff out the cuticle oil from across the house and also wanted their cuticles moisturized. Anyway, in the comments section of my last video, you guys said that you wanted more unplanned videos where I'm just trying products and figuring them out as I go. So I hope you enjoyed this one. As always, everything that I use will be listed in the description box below. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and staying subscribed and I'll see you in my next one. Okay, love you. Bye.